Yo, what's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of the Creative Caffeine Podcast. I'm your host. My name is Connor Wells. I am a photographer, videographer, and podcast producer, and we talk about all those things every single week right here on YouTube, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts. I hope you're all having a fantastic week. Thank you so much for tuning in to this week's episode. If you're new around here, you know it'd be amazing if you uh, followed the podcast, hit the subscribe button, all that jazz, all the fun stuff. And let's get into it. So I don't want to beat around the bush too much. I don't want to take up too much of your time, especially if you are if you're on your commute and all that jazz. But I want to talk about a subject today that I get a lot of comments on in my Instagram feed, on my reels, um, especially on TikTok and on YouTube. And that question is, what's the best beginner camera? And my answer is, how long is a piece of string? <laughs> there are there are so many answers to that. It really like depends on what you shoot, uh, whether you shoot video, whether you shoot photo, whether you, what type of, um, you know, subjects you're shooting. You could be doing portrait photography, you could be doing animal or wildlife, you could be doing sports where you need something pretty fast. Uh, and that's, you know, the same goes for photo and video there. Um, it really does depend. So what I've done today is I've compiled a list of five cameras that I think I can recommend to you guys if you're thinking of getting a beginner camera or if you're, you know, looking to get something a little bit better than your than your current camera. So I've shot on uh, two different camera types. Um, sorry, two different camera brands. I've shot with Canon. I started my photography and videography journey with Canon. I decided Canon wasn't really for me. I'm not saying that Canon's a bad cameras by any stretch of the imagination that, you know, some of their cinema cameras are absolutely amazing. You know, I forever always wanted the R5, um, but then, you know, overheating. Um, so I, I decided to switch to Sony. I've been using Sony cameras for about three years now. I'm recording this um, on a Sony camera. I'm shooting on the Sony ZV-E1 and it's absolutely fantastic. I, I love this camera so much. It's it's my, my main video camera now, even though it's a vlogging camera. Um, now, a lot of these cameras on these lists are vlogging cameras. But anyway, let's go back to um, what I was talking about. So I can only really comfortably, you know, I can only feel comfortable recommending a camera system that I've used myself. There'd be no point of me recommending, you know, Fujifilm or Olympus, uh, Lumix or Nikon. I don't think I'd ever recommend Nikon. Um, but <laughs> needless to say, needless to say, sorry, that was some really, really unnecessary shade to Nikon there. I mean, is, is it an unnecessary... I don't know. Ap apologies to all the Nikon shooters out there. You know, it, it sucks that you're shooting on a potato, but <laughs> I'm sorry. This this episode, I promise, is not going to be all just Nikon shade. I, I promise it's it's not. Um, on all serious note, I, I, will, I would only recommend cameras um, that A, I have, you know, used a, that brand before and I know that they're reliable and and B, that, that I would use them myself. Um whether it's a beginner camera or, you know, just a little bit of a step up from a beginner camera. I kind of feel like everyone has like three stages. They get their basic camera, their beginner one that can only really shoot, you know, 1080p, a few frames a second. Um, and then there's that sort of mid tier. And then there's that step up to, you know, like the full frame camera. Now there is a two, two full frame cameras. Uh, no, Tell light. There is one full frame frame camera on this list that I feel I could I can recommend that doesn't you know really really break the bank. So I've got two Sony cameras here on this list, and then I've got three Canon cameras. The Sony cameras for me seem to come in a little bit more expensive, and Canon recently have been putting out some cameras that are a little bit more beginner friendly. The Sony ones, like the Sony ZV E1, I you know, it's a, it's a, sorry, not the Sony ZV-E1, the Sony ZV-1, I probably wouldn't recommend for people who are looking to, you know, do, you know, some client work on. Whereas these ones, I think you can, you can get away with, with, you know, doing a bit of client work on. So let's get into it. Let's start with the most expensive. We'll start with the most expensive. And that is a very recent camera. It came out this uh, in 2023. And that is the Sony A6700. Now, 
excuse me, I've got the prices of all of them. In, um, I've got the price for the body, just in case you've got some Sony or Canon lenses already and you just want to upgrade your body. Um, and then I've got um, the price with the body and a kit lens. Um, all the kit lenses are different on them. I'm not going to go into it. Um, with, you know the details but they're usually like a 16 to 55 or an 18 to 55 uh, it changes all the time so the a6700 on its own on just the body is here in the uk 1429 pounds uh, with the kit lens it's 1549 pounds so a little bit of price difference um i i will preface this i don't recommend using the kit lens the kit lens is, is not going to be great. It's not going to be the best, you know, quality. It's not going to be sharp. It's it's a very basic lens. They're going to be pretty plasticky. Um, yeah, uh, they're not the best quality. So let's go into the specs. So the A6700 has a 26 megapixel APS-C. So that's a crop sensor camera. There is one full frame camera on here. Um, if you want a full episode, a full podcast about the differences between APS-C and full frame, do let me know in the comments below as I'd love to make that episode and let me know if it's something that you'd you'd be interested in. But I'm not going to go too in-depth today. So it's an APS-C sensor. It's got an ISO range of 100 to 3200. Um, I probably wouldn't shoot that high, but it can go to as low as 50 ISO, which is, which is quite interesting. Um, I... Yeah, Sony's always seemed to go down to 50 on their, their ISO, which is great if you're shooting in a really bright environment. Um, it's got five axis sensor shift, so IBIS, um, image stabilization. That's basically where um, the sensor is stabilized. So if there's, it tries to eliminate a little bit of that shake, you know, that handheld sort of look, it gets rid of that. Um, it's got a three inch fully articulating screen. So basically um, a flip out screen. The previous A60 line a6600 a6500 it had that flippy up screen which was never any good like if you wanted to put a microphone on the top of your camera you could but if you wanted to see yourself the microphone the phone's in the way and it, it just it, it's poor design sony i'm glad that in the last few years that they've been really listening to their audience and you know taking on board but we we like flip out screens we don't like these little tilty things um yeah, it's got a 3,000, uh, sorry, 2,359K dot electronic viewfinder. So not bad. It's not It's not great, not terrible. It's quite a tiny viewfinder from what I've seen. Um, it takes 11 frames per second on continuous shooting. Obviously, you've got to have a pretty fast card. And then it shoots 4K at 120 frames a second. That's pretty good for a camera body of, of that size and of that price. 120 frames a second and then full HD get this full HD at 240 frames a second that's kind of nuts 240 frames a second in full HD um I don't know if there's any like cripple to it like it sometimes Canon tend to cripple their cameras I'll talk about one of the predecessors um in when we get to the cannons but i don't think there's any like uh crop or you lose autofocus or anything um this camera does actually have 10 bit 422 color sampling which is fantastic you love a bit of 10 bit um and it's also a weather sealed body so you can you know you can be out in the rain out in the snow and you don't have to worry as much as you typically would with a non weather sealed camera so that's a great little camera. I was thinking about getting one of them as like a little B camera, um, but then I got the A, you know, I got the ZVE one. I decided, you know, I'm going to wait. I'm going to save my money. I'm going to get, you know, the ZVE one. Um, it's one that I've wanted for a while. I knew as soon as that one came out, I'd, I'd want to get it. But the A6700 was, you know, it was a contender for me to buy, to buy for like a little B camera. I've got my two full frame cameras, which are my Sony A7IVs, but I did need a third. Let's move on to the next Sony camera. This is the second one. I've only got two Sony cameras I can really, you know, feel like I can recommend here. And that is the Sony ZV-E10. I actually recommended this to one of my friends. I've done shoots for her before. She's a bass player called Daisy Pepper. Big up, Daisy, if you're listening. But um, she was looking to upgrade her camera. I recommended the Sony ZV-E10. So body alone is £599, so £600 here in the UK. 
And then with a kit lens, it's £697 um, in the UK. So, you know, it, um, you know, just under £100 difference, I believe. So this one, very, very similar specs to the A6700. So we have got a, again, 24 megapixel. Um, so no, sorry, actually, the A6700 was 26 megapixels. So a couple of megapixels down. We've got 24 megapixel APS-C CMOS sensor. Um, ISO, again, the same, um, 100 to 3200. Same three inch fully articulating flip out screen. Uh, again, 11 frames per second continuous shooting. But this is where there's a little bit of difference. Um, there is, it goes up to 4K 30 frames a second. So you don't get any 4K uh, slow motion. So you don't get 4K 60. Um, you don't get 4K 120. But, you know, that is understandable for that price point. You know, the A6700 is, you know, you know nearly double the price. So you are going to have some compromises in the video recording capabilities and formats. Um, yes, yeah, so you get 4K 30 frames a second and obviously 25, 24. Um, but you do, you do get full HD 120 frames a second. And I'm going to assume as well, full HD, 60 frames a second, just in case you don't want anything too slow. So that's quite cool. Um, it's a lot smaller of a body. Um, I don't think it's got a viewfinder. Um, let me double check. Um, ZVE10. Um, no, it doesn't have a viewfinder. So if you are taking pictures, you're going to have to use the screen. Like you're going to have to use the L uh, um, LSD, <laughs> LCD screen to uh, to shoot with that. Um, but the A6700, it, it does have a viewfinder, but it is quite like, it's like a tiny, tiny little viewfinder. So um, they're not always the best. Now let's move on to Canon. So we've got three Canon cameras to talk about, two which are APS-C and one which is full frame. So the Canon R50. Now, this is the upgrade of the Canon M50. Now, I'll give you a little bit of backstory about the Canon M50. So, if you've been following me for a while, so, you know, since the beginning of, you know, my photography and videography journey, the first sort of proper camera I got was the Canon M50. It was a APS-C uh, 24 megapixel camera. Um, it was advertised as a 4K you know, vlogging camera. But as I touched on earlier, Canon used to, and sometimes still do, they have a habit of like cripple hammering their cameras. So I don't think they should have advertised this, the M50 as a 4K camera. Why? Well, because when you flick it into 4K, you lose Canon's fantastic dual pixel autofocus and it goes to more of a contrast based autofocus. So it would constantly hunt back and forth, jitter, you know, sometimes it would focus on the background, sometimes it would focus on you or even just miss you completely. You'd have to be in really sort of good light for it to actually pick up on you. But even then, you know, it wouldn't be tracking your eye, it wouldn't be tracking your face, it would just hunt back and forth. Um, and also it would crop in. Now, obviously, an APS-C sensor is cropped anyway, but it would crop in again. So, you, if you know, if you're filming, you'd have to either, one, use a wide-angle lens, or two, stick use the lens that you currently have and just move it back. That's what I had to do with the Canon M50. I had to, um, you know, basically just move it back. I had it shoved up against the wall in my old office and had to lock in manual focus, which, you know, is not the most convenient with a, you know, getting from A to B. It was a great camera. It served me well for, you know, what I needed back then, you know, you know, a few years ago, 4k wasn't, you know, too much of a must have on a camera. Um, you know, not even people like Peter McKinnon were uploading in 4K on YouTube at that point. You know, this was a point where Peter McKinnon, you know, was vlogging on the regular and I'd go back and watch his vlogs now and they were in 1080p and I was like, oh my God, that still looks great. But needless to say, we've got the Canon R50 now. Cut a long story short, Canon M50 did well. It's, I still believe Canon's most popular interchangeable lens camera. They released the Canon M50 Mark II. It was crap. It was a software update. Basically, it didn't fix any of the problems that people had. No one really bought it. So they've run out, killed off the M line, and they've 
created the R50. They're Canon are really leaning into the R line. So the R50 on its own is £589. With a kit lens, it's £699. So let's go through the specs. So I'm leaning in here because I, I love the little M50 range. Um, it just didn't have any lenses. So again, 24 megapixel APS-C CMOS sensor. ISO range, again, pretty standard, 100 to 3200. Um, three inch articulating screen, um, 2360 um, K, K dot electronic viewfinder. I'm going to be honest, I don't really know what that is, um, but it's got a viewfinder. Um, the Canon M50 viewfinder was actually okay. I, I find I found it all right. Um, 12 frames a second or 15 frames a second with electronic shutter. That's continuous burst sort of mode. Again, you need a fast SD card for that. Um, 4K up to 30 frames a second and no crop, no crop. That, like, it, it, it took them a while, but no crop on uh, the R50s um, 4K video shooting. Um, and also you still get the dual pixel autofocus. Um, I think it's dual pixel autofocus 2 now. Um, but yeah, I know Canon did that to protect their like higher end range of 4K cameras, you know, like the, um, the R... P, the R, I think it was just the original R at that point, R, the R5, R6 and stuff as well because they were all out of cinema times. But yeah, no crop, 4K, up to 30 frames a second, obviously 25 and 24 as well. Uh, full HD, up to 120 frames a second. We had that on the M50 as well, but you'd lose autofocus. I don't know if you lose the autofocus on the R50. I'm, I'm going to assume not because they have, it, it seems to be that they're listening to their audience now, and I'm going to just presume that, you know, they haven't crippled the camera. And also, I forgot to mention as well, on all of the cameras, you get built-in wireless, so there's going to be like an app on your phone where you can, you know, you can remote shoot, so you can use your phone to use it as a trigger, or you can transfer files, um, depending on the format, to your phone, edit photos on the go, edit video on the go, and all that sort of stuff, which is great. I love that feature. So the R50, um, I wouldn't, pro I probably wouldn't use it for, um, you know, some client work. Again, it's not 10 bit, I don't think. Uh, I do believe it is 8 bit. Um, Canon R50, 10 bit. Let's, let's just double check, you know, fact check it. I don't want to be pulled up on anything. Uh, oh my God, no, fuck me. Um, sorry, it is 10 bit HDR video. Interesting. So it is 10 bit. Wow. Okay, cool. Four two two ten bit. They they fixed that from the M fifty. The M fifty was eight bit. Okay, this is great. Okay, I can probably recommend this for a little bit of client work. Maybe not the big jobs, but you know, small little mum and pop shops. Wow, fantastic. Uh, Canon R ten. This is a new Canon camera as well. They're really leaning into the R range of cameras. You love to see it. They're they're great. Just open up the sensor to the the mount to Sigma. It'll be great. Um. Canon R10, the body alone, um, 899, um, so 900 pounds, with a kit lens is 999, so 100 pounds difference, um, so there we go with that, so 24 megapixels, uh, APS-C CMOS sensor, same ISO as all the others, 100 to 3200, 3 inch fully articulating screen again, um, it's got electronic viewfinder as well, this one, um, better performance with the burst rate and frames per second photos. So you get 15 frames a second or 23 frames a second with the, with the electronic shutter rather than the mechanical. Um, that's continuous shooting. So that's great. Um, so if you're shooting something that's, you know, fast moving, like some sports, you're shooting a football game, you're shooting um, some runners running, you're shooting an event uh, like live music where um, something's moving pretty fast and you need to capture that motion. That's fantastic. 23 frames a second. It should be plenty for that. That should um, that should get the job done. Fantastic stuff. Um, this one, 4K, 60 frames a second. I do believe there is a small crop, a, a very small crop. Um, let me double check. 4K 60 FPS crop. Yeah, it is coming up. That, that, that There is a crop, I believe. Yeah. Um, 
yeah, it's cropped 4K. So I believe it goes into APS-C. Uh, it, well, it's already APS-C, sorry. It, there is like a 1.4 times crop or 1.2 times crop um, for 4K60. Again, you can just work around that. I, I've got 4K60 crop on my A7 IV. The way I get around with that is either one, use a wider lens or two, just move back. But, you know, to permit to for me... I use it to my advantage. You know, if I need a little bit of extra reach, if I've not got my 70 to 200 with me or an 85 mil, you know, I've got my 24 to 70. If it's not, you know, tight enough, whack it in 4K 60 and you've basically got like an 85 mil lens. Fantastic. You love to see it. Um, again, full HD, 120 frames a second. Now, this is, we're moving on to the last one of this episode and that is the Canon R8. Now, this is Canon's new full-frame camera. And now it's not, you know, a flagship, but it is a full-frame sensor, which is which is great. You love to see a full-frame sensor. I, I love full-frame. It's just it's just fantastic. It's, uh, you know, if you're getting into photography and videography, it's what you should be striving for, a full-frame camera. Uh, so, body alone on the R8 is £1,109. With a kit lens, it's £1,519. Yeah, quite a uh, significant jump if you add the kit lens with it. But, again, it will be a full-frame lens, so full-frame lenses are a lot more expensive than APS-C lenses. Obviously, you can put APS-C lenses on a full-frame camera. You just have to crop it in. Um, it, they'll give you an option on the menu. So, 24 megapixel full-frame CMOS sensor. ISO 100 to 102,400. I mean, I, I don't know what situation you'd, you'd be in to be shooting at 1,000, uh, sorry, 102,400 ISO. That's going to be grainy as hell, but there we go. The option's there. Three inch fully articulated screen, electronic viewfinder. So, six frames a second, mechanical. Six, interesting. But then, Get this, 40 frames a second electronic. Unreal, 40 frames a second electronic continuous shooting. We got 4K 60 on the video and full HD up to 180 frames per second video recording. Again, that's all in 10-bit color so uh, sampling. Um, and it's also a weather-sealed body as well. Um, again... If you're shooting like outside and all that sort of stuff, I, I would really recommend um, a full a weather sealed body. It just gives you a lot more peace of mind. My Sony A7 IV is a weather sealed. They're great. Love it. Um, I'm not entirely sure if the uh, ZVE1 is weather sealed. I don't think it is because it's got the little microphone thing at the top. But it, it's, it's, it's okay. It's okay. We, we, we can move with that. So... There we go. You got two full frame cameras there that I would recommend. I've had a go on the, some of these cameras, and again, the Canon menu system hasn't really changed much compared to like the Sony ones. But these are all cameras that I would recommend if you're looking to get a, a first camera, say like the Canon R50 um, or a Sony ZV-E10, or if you're just looking to upgrade to something that say has better video specs, like the A6700, which has you know 4K 120. Or uh, the Canon R8, which is 4K 60. You know, these are all really good cameras. They're pretty friendly uh, on people's budgets, on people's wallets. You know, they're not like, you know, like an A7 IV or a ZV-E1, which is, you know, £2,400. And that's just for the body alone. So these are all under £2,000, uh, $2,000, whatever. Um, so these are all pretty budget friendly. And they're great great cameras if you'd like to see an episode where i go into you know less budget friendly you know all of these like full frame cameras that i would recommend let me know um maybe you're at that point of your photography and videography journey where you're past the point of wanting a beginner camera or an intermediate camera and you're looking to get like a full frame absolute powerhouse you know like an a7s3 um a canon r5 and all those sorts of things um or maybe a, uh, the R3, depends what you shoot. Um, there's a camera out there for everybody. I, I fully believe that, that there is a camera out there for everybody. There is no such thing as a perfect camera, but there's a camera out there for everybody. I I just think it would take the fun out of it if there was a perfect camera. You know, I like, 
I like the battle. I like the struggle, you know, as long as it doesn't, you know, interfere too much with the A to B. But video editing, you know, taking photos, you know, being a videographer, it's a lot of problem solving. And I, I quite like, I quite like a little bit of back and forth between me and my camera. I know it may sound weird. And you know, it's just like a personal thing. Let me know in the comments below if you're, you're there as well. But, you know, having the perfect camera, I think will take the joy out of it. You know, humans strive to solve problems. And I think, you know, having 4K, a 4K60 crop on my A7IVs, you know, it might be a bit of a downer, but it gives me a little bit of a challenge, keeps me on my toes. So, and also I can use it to my advantage. Fantastic stuff. So there we have it, everyone. If you've enjoyed this episode, I really hope you have. Um, please do hit the subscribe button. Please follow the podcast and whack a five-star review on Apple Podcasts, on Spotify. And also you can watch the shorts and the full-length thing on Spotify and YouTube as well. Until then... I will see you guys on the next episode of the Creative Caffeine Podcast. And also, if you've got any creative friends that you feel this episode would benefit or past episodes would benefit, send it their way. Send it their way. Slide into their DMs. Pop, pop, pop it in the WhatsApp group. Um, until then, guys, have a great rest of the week. Stay creative, stay shooting, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Peace.